Hey there, this is Ira Hyden, Will, the Wizard Master from Nightmare in Elm Street 3. And I wish I was in Nightmare in Elm Street 4, but they had to kill me, so I didn't get to make it there. So that sucks. But remember, <laughs> whatever you do, don't fall asleep. <laughs> Number one rule, Ira. <laughs> right. So, yeah, man. No, I appreciate you uh, you, you coming on to chat, man. This is Absolutely. Um, I've always been a big fan of... Uh, of Dream Warriors, I think it's easily the one of the best Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Um, and can you kind of reflect for me on the fandom behind Dream Warriors and why you think it's so popular with fans, man? Um, well, I think there's a, a base of the story which lets you understand more that these are kids growing up and they don't know what the hell is going on and what is happening. And the adults, the professionals shove them in a mental ward saying they have mental health issues. And, um, you know, we banded together as a group to try and, and fight the demon. Um, I think a lot of fans kind of grasp that idea and like the fact that, um, you know, it wasn't, everyone alone for themselves you know we we were the dream warriors you know and although stupid freddy did corner us separately you know and attack us and do what he did to us um i think there's that that sense of camaraderie that um really sits well with the fans no that's awesome and i dig it that's really true it's you know i even introduced it to my daughter and she was i think she said that that was her favorite one as well so um, so far, she's only seen, I think, up to five. So she's seen, you know, a decent amount. Right on. So um, was it always planned for Will to be in a wheelchair? Was that always part of the plan? Yeah, that was that, that was, was the character from the very beginning. Um, when I got the script, the fact that, um, yeah, it was uh, where I was in a wheelchair. Sorry, is somebody coming out? Okay. Um, I was in a wheelchair, and in the dreams, I turned into the dungeon master. You know, sure. that's where with um with my wheelchair. Yeah, that's the best, dude. I love it. Was that uh, that was a fun idea? Was that always in as well? Uh, you turning into the master? There was a master. Yeah, one? that that was in the script that I got. Okay, um, sweet. Yeah, I yeah, never. That's awesome. I never had the original script that um, Wes Craven wrote, ah. um, but apparently there's more in that one with uh, wizardry and Gandalf stuff. Get out of here. See, that would have been cool, man. I got to look that up. Yeah. So, you know, when you think of this experience on the film, right, where mm -hmm. is the first place that you go in your mind? You know, was it a specific day, an event, just the character or... Is anything like, you know, just zoom you right there? Um, you know, lately when I hear it, again, it, it takes me right back to the fans. It takes sure. me back to going to these conventions now and, and, and how awesome it is. The horror genre family and how cool they are and, um, and everybody getting together and, and celebrating this movie. But, oh my gosh, if, yeah, I'm. You know, it's honestly like when I think about it. When I think about this movie, the first thing that comes up to me is is gratefulness. Um, so so um, so happy to be a part of the Elm Street family, um, and how cool of an experience I had um, getting to play the character that I I was able to portray, and and being the fact that. I used to play Dungeons and Dragons in high school sure. and grade school. So I really knew the role. So I had so much fun doing it. Um, so, yeah, that's really, I guess, the first thing that pops up is the fact that, um, you know, uh, gratefulness and, and, and happiness and, and horror. I mean, and you get to say that you were killed by Freddy Krueger. I mean, that's a pretty cool thing to brag about. I mean, there's there's three things in my career as an actor that I'm I'm like so excited to say I'm a part of. One, obviously being killed by Freddy Krueger. Two, um, getting to stare at Cassandra Peterson in Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Three, getting to voice the mini Stay Puft characters in Ghostbusters that Jason Reitman directed. After I was going to get to that, man. That's pretty exciting. I want to talk about that a little more. Sure. That's awesome, man. I love that. That's really, I mean, and plus, 
Um, you know, uh, a Dream Warriors is, is one of my uh, favorites also because it also has a theme song written by Doc. And I mean, how could you not? I think that's on my playlist. I don't know, once a day, once every other day. I think I must be hearing that. Like, you know, my daughter's been, lis been, li been listening to it since she was like two years old. So she knows that song. Like, you And know, how old is she now? Hand. She's 12. Ah, oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, um, so she knows that one, like the back of her hand. Yeah, I, I knew Dawkins growing up. So I lived in Tampa, Florida. Oh, cool. uh, and, and graduated high school there and then came out to Los Angeles. Um, was born in New York City and then... Uh -huh. um, but when I got to Florida, um, I became a rock and roller, Van Halen, Metallica, Dawkins, yes. um, you know, all all the cool Quiet Riot, um, all the all the hair metal bands and everything. Um, and so when I realized that I was in Nightmare 3 and the supervising producer came up to me, Nikki Marvin, and said, oh, we're thinking of going for there's two bands for this this movie we're thinking of going with. One is Marillion and the other is Doc. And I'm like, screw Marillion. I mean, whatever. I mean, they're great, I'm sure. And they have a great career and everything. But you got to go rock and roll with this. I mean, and horror and everything. I mean, honestly. Oh, yeah. It's one of the best, man. I love it. Like I said, there's not a day that goes by. That I don't I don't sing that song. That's all. Yeah. And, um, you know, so... Let's step away from that. You know, other than Dream Warriors, you know, do you have another favorite uh, nightmare film or is there is, you know, like a second you favorite or you can't top the first one. I mean, it's honestly, true. it's true. Honestly, that set the precedent uh, for for everything for for Freddy Krueger. And and um, so I, I can't ever say oh, I'd like I mean, the third one is is still my favorite, but I mean, you you got to go back to the original, the original for being able to yeah, create it. it. Great. Yeah, of course, right? of course, of course. And it's so funny because at the time before I got Nightmare, um, I did a Pepsi commercial for the movies. And it actually is the the commercial that I got my set. I got my SAG card, my Screen Actors oh, Guild okay, card. Sweet. Yeah. And it was with a bunch of celebrities. It was with Johnny Depp. Oh, go figure. Um, Cheryl and Finn, um, Brooke <laughs> McCarter from Lost Boys, sure, yeah, um, yeah. China Phillips, you know, from oh, Wilson yeah. Phillips. It was it was an amazing experience. And if I have the timing right, I think this was like right after Johnny did uh, Nightmare. And so I never asked him about that. You know, I didn't really, really think too much about Nightmare because that's honestly that movie scared the shit out of me. Sure. Oh, yeah, me too, dude. I have uh, fears of it growing up. I watched it a little too young. So that's why yeah. I showed it to my daughter when she was young so she can have the same. <laughs> Great. Yeah, my, my boy didn't watch it until he was like 13. So See? that's not bad. Three, three years ago. Yeah. That's not bad, man. That's cool. Yeah, he didn't want to watch it. He doesn't understand how cool daddy is. <laughs> Dude, not a lot of people can call themselves a wizard master. You know what I mean? The, the original wizard master, the by the way, I was pre Harry Potter. See that shit? Yeah, you're not messing around, man. No joke. So you mentioned, um, I like I was going to say that you've been to your share of horror conventions. And, you know, I guess what do you enjoy most about meeting the fans? But, you know, like you, you kind of um, covered that a little bit before. So. I mean, I, I love going to horror conventions and meeting people. I think it's like one of the most funnest, fun things they're, to do. They're incredible. I mean, it, it's a, a weekend. It goes by so fast. But like I'm going to San Antonio, August 2nd, 3rd and 4th to meet some fans. And, and some of the Dream Warriors, Warriors will be there. Um, August 23rd through the 25th. Big one is coming up. Spooky Empire. We're going to South Carolina South for the Carolina. very first time. Yeah, sure. For the, because Spooky's only been in Orlando. So um, Robert will be there. Heather will be there. Bradley Gregg, um, you know, uh, Rodney Eastman, Jennifer Rubin, and Kincaid. So it's going to be, and Heather Lagenkamp, of course, who I keep in touch with to this day. She's wonderful. Um, she always takes us out to dinner like she's our mom. Oh, I love <laughs> it. That's so sweet. <laughs> she's really, she's really cool. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's a wonderful experience. You get to go to these things, get flown out there, you meet the fans, you sign for everything for all these posters and crazy houses and gloves and stuff, and and talk about the movie. You know, I mean, how bad could that be? 
What's one of the craziest things you've signed? Or what's the coolest one? Coolest a car. You've signed? A car? Really? Yeah, somebody came by with an Xbox car that had, it was all plastered with Nightmare on Elm Street stuff and a bunch of characters on different sides. So there was a Wizard Master area. So I signed that. Get out of here. That rules so much, man. I love it. Right. So, you know, I stick within the genre. We'll fast forward to uh, to 2021, right? Like you mentioned, um, how did you end up voicing the mini puffs in Ghostbusters Afterlife? How'd that come about, man? That's so cool. So one of the things about this business, Mike, is it's, you know, it's not always what you know. It, it is who you know. Sure. I get it. Definitely. Um, and so many years ago, I was in a, a league, a broomball league with a bunch of actors and, and producers and directors. And there was this young director who used to come with his sister um, and uh, he was only directing commercials at the time uh jason reitman <laughs> just a nobody <laughs> and uh i just stayed friends with him through the whole masses and, and craziness and uh when i saw that he was directing um after life i decided to say what the hell and i sent him a long email saying but dude i've been done so much voiceover work and everything from Dead Poets Society. And I did uh, three or four seasons on Code Black, a TV show. And, and so I know how to do ADR work. And that's for the fans of yours that don't know. That's like voice work for the people behind the scenes and, and stuff um, and different ghosts that that scream and, and stuff like that. So uh, it took him a while to get back to me because he was super busy, but he said, absolutely. So I got to do the ADR work for the whole session, take a break from three to four. And um, one of the producers said, we need you to stay because Jason wants you to do these uh, special characters. And I had no idea at the time. Get out of here. That's so fun. I spent four, three or four hours with 10 other actors. Oh, my John God. Cas John Kassir, the 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 crypt you know right. the tales of the crypt i know exactly um, who he is yeah and a bunch of other actors jeff whist um i mean it was amazing we had so much fun and jason's direction on these little characters were like just great he's like he was busting up laughing with what we did um when we we're on the roomba and it's going through he goes you gotta think of it like you're you're like mario andretti and, and you're you're a race car so all of us are going <laughs> <laughs> i mean like it's just so much fun so that was that's how i got the job and that's how um to this day it's been the best voiceover uh experience of my life oh my god dude if you could see my wife's office she has uh like two shelves of little mini pops we have them from like 7-eleven we have them from baskin robbins they, they released like like 20 mini pop yep. funkos we had yep. every single one of them in my in my wife's office that's that's awesome um that's sorry so about cool, that man i love yeah it. so it was a, an incredible experience um it's so funny mike like i'm covering this adidas uh thing on me because dude there's i'm working with nike right now oh, shit. and they're they're coming up with a wizard master sneaker get out of here no, oh I, I kid God. you. I kid you not. My buddy uh, Bill Allen, who is in Rad, I don't know yeah, if you remember the eighties. Yeah, eighty five. Yeah, Rad. Yeah. He's he's my my he's like my brother. He's not even a buddy. Um, so he got asked by this guy Keith to do um a BMX uh, Crew Jones thing, and so he turned him on to me, and and uh, so I'm getting my own Wizard Master sneakers. Oh, so I that, may that's have to the, pick that's that up. Hand man, over the I think heart. I'm kidding. So it's like, screw Adidas, sorry, Nike all the way. All the way, my man, that's the way to do um, it. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, they came up with so many of those uh, mini Stay Puft characters. Um, and I sign a lot of those pictures at conventions. Sure. Um, I think I have some up on my website that um, anybody can do. I saw that, own. yeah, I saw that. I'll make sure to link it to your website. you got a cool. great website. It's really informative yeah. and it's really up to date. I really dig it, man. It's really well done. Yeah, this guy named Bill Perry who ironically was my stunt double for Nightmare 3 and 
Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, yeah, um, yeah. did it. He's an incredible guy, and he knows how to do websites. And he also did Wes Craven's website. So, out of here. That's really cool. Yeah. That's a great thing of knowledge. I had no idea. See? So I also saw from the website that you have a few films in pre-production. Is there anything you want to plug or mention as like a last yeah, question? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're getting close for... Um, probably next year in November. But um, so as I, I kind of told you in the very beginning that a good friend of mine was Brandon Lee, right. um, the actor from The Crow. And uh, we have a documentary about him that's going to be coming out in November. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing all about his life and his friends and stuff. We have like 60 hours that we had to cut down um, from like Melissa Etheridge, Lou Diamond Phillips, John Lee Hancock. Bill Allen, who was Brandon's best friend, uh, Bill's brother Sherman, who Brandon gave him his guitar. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful thing that's coming along. And on uh, piggybacking that is the project that we've been working on for a long time uh, called The Raven, the Crow and the Dragon. And um, that is um, a narrative told through Bill Allen's um, voice about Brandon. Oh, wow. And, uh, wow and their times together and um, all the people that were in our world at that time, Steve Lukather, um, you know, again, John Lee Hancock, George Davis, George Clooney, Miguel Ferrer, um, all these incredible people. So that uh, is what we're working on. And, and I took the call before you about uh, Robbie Krieger wrote our song already called the raving, the crow and the dragon. Um, and Robbie is the guitarist from the doors. Um, so, yeah, we have a lot of good things coming up there. Um, yeah. That's amazing, dude. I love it. Well, listen, um, maybe I'll see you down the line at one of these conventions coming up. And that would be great. And continue chatting. I think that'll be great, man. Let's do it, dude. All right. Well, thanks so much, Ira. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, man. Take care. Thanks.